Hi everyone, I'm Carol Curdo. I'm with the Mass Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And today's topic is aging and vision loss. <laughs> okay, let's start. Let's begin with, well, well, first of all, what do you want to get out of this? Uh, what you want to get out of this presentation is that just because we're aging doesn't mean we're going to lose vision and be visually impaired or blind, okay? Not everybody will have an eye disease, and not everybody who is diagnosed with an eye disease will even lose vision from that, okay? So let's first speak about the healthy aging eye. One of the first things is uh, when we're in our 40s or 50s, maybe if we're nearsighted already, um, we start reading like this, right? Okay, and how did we fix that? We went and got reading glasses, right? Okay, correctable, okay. Um, it's just because we're getting older and our eyes are finding it more difficult to accommodate, okay? To, that means to um, uh, get the correct reading distance. Also, think about this, lighting. Hmm. When we were in our teens and our 20s, um, our pupils were doing a fantastic job, okay? They opened wide, okay? They let in all the light. But guess what? Just as we age, ladies, have we sort of maybe lost maybe a half an inch in height? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The pupil shrinks just a little bit too. So it cannot open enough as it used to to let in all that light we need. So we need four times as much light when we're in our 60s and 70s. We need 10 times as much light when we're in our 80s and 90s. Keep that in mind. But that's part of the healthy aging eye. What about uh, somebody told me they had um, dry eyes, okay? Not an eye disease, you're not losing vision. It's, it's not comfortable, but there are medications that address that issue, whether the eyes are dry or they're wet or they're itchy. Have you noticed that it's more difficult when you're out walking to judge the depth of a step or a curb because maybe they're all gray? The, the sidewalk's gray, the curb's gray, it's more difficult to judge the height. Sure, sure. Um, we do need some more contrast. And the reason is because our crystalline lens inside our eye, whose major job is to be crystalline and flexible and direct all the lights or things we see to the back of our eye, up to the brain, so we know what we're seeing. And guess what happens to things that are crystalline and flexible as, as it ages. They get kind of stiff and yellow, right? Sure, okay. Uh, can anybody else think of uh, something else that happens with the healthy aging eye? In other words, it's not, we're not blind, we're not visually impaired, yes? Cataracts. Cataracts, cataracts are an eye disease. Maybe I better move on with this healthy aging oh. eye bit. Okay. Hmm. However, there are eye diseases, okay? And eye diseases are in general, well at least this point in time, aren't curable, okay? They can be addressed and uh, there are treatments available to maybe stop any kind of vision loss or at least slow it down, that's, better. that's a better way of putting it. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> there are terms like blind, Legally blind, visually impaired, partially sighted, sees fingers, um, crummy vision, etc. These are all different um, terms that various agencies working with people and their vision use. And they all mean different things, except legally blindness is a term. And this means that when your vision, when your no longer perfect 2020 vision is now 20 over 200 or, or even higher in your best eye. Okay, it just means you're available or eligible for services from our state agency for the blind, Mass Commission for the Blind. Uh, my organization's a nonprofit, and you do not need to be legally blind to get services. So let's look at some of these eye diseases. Okay, uh, we'll kind of roughly talk about uh, four major eye diseases. Age, we'll do eye age-related eye diseases, of course. Okay, so the first uh, eye disease that probably comes to mind 
or at least I'm going to start talking about, because I know a couple of you have diagnosis <laughs> with, with it, is macular degeneration. Okay, yes. Oh, you don't have to raise your hand. We're being taped, and you may not want the world to know some of your um, private things. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, what is macular degeneration? Okay, why don't I tell you, because we only have a limited amount of time. Macular degeneration affects the clear, the center part of your eye. It's called the macula. It's on the back of the eye, the back of our eye we call the retina, okay? And it does not affect your side peripheral vision, okay? The macula is the site of our clear, sharp, color, reading vision. So if we have macular degeneration and it's affecting the macula part of our eye, what kinds of daily activities do you think we're going to have trouble with? Driving. 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 Yeah, what, what was that? Yeah. Okay, maybe reading. Uh, any of the close tasks, looking at pictures of our grandkids, uh, doing our hair, so the guys shaving, sure. Any kind of a close task. What, there are two types of macular degeneration. In fact, I asked somebody here and they weren't certain what they had. So there's dry macular degeneration and there's wet macular degeneration. Uh, you will be experiencing uh, dry macular degeneration <clears throat> when you look at um, maybe a flagpole or a light post and maybe it's zigzaggy. Or you're looking at the printed word, you're looking at something uh, on a page, and you don't quite see all of the same, uh, all of the letters, okay? That's a sign of macular degeneration. In fact, those of you who have diagnosed with it, your doctor probably gave you something like this, a mac, uh, an Amsler grid for you to use every day. So if you have dry macular degeneration, and your doctor didn't give you a, an Amsler grid, you might want to ask why, okay? Wet macular degeneration. This is another story, okay? Uh, this means blood vessels are leaking, okay? Um, so how are we going to treat that? Because we've got to stop bleeding in the eye. Yeah, previously, we used laser treatments, hot and cool laser treatments. But today, we're doing eye injections, and you know what, they're doing a, a, yes, they're doing a pretty good job of stopping the vision loss, okay? Or at least holding off on it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, do we have people besides you getting um, shots for wet macular? Okay. Okay, great. So um, any, any form of macular degeneration is affecting all our everyday close activities, okay? Um, and it's our clear, sharp reading vision. Yeah. Let's look at glaucoma. Glaucoma is an increased, incidentally, macular degeneration is the leading cause of blindness in 60 and older. Glaucoma, glaucoma is the sneak thief of sight. It's the leading cause of blindness in adults 35 and older. Whenever we go see our eye doctor, no matter what kind of eye doctor it is, he or she will be testing the pressure in the eye. That's not, not our blood pressure, it's pressure in the eye, okay? Because when the pressure in the eye is too strong for our eye, it's pre what's it pressing on? It's pressing on the optic nerve. And if the optic nerve is damaged, it's not gonna regenerate itself, at least not in our generation, okay? So the common treatment, uh, anybody want to tell me the common treatment for glaucoma usually? Just shout it out, yes? It could be surgery, yeah, for open angle. Eye drops. Eye drops, yeah. Right, there's, there's quite a few uh, different types of glaucoma. The most common uh, deals with um, eye drops, expensive eye drops, multiple types, two, three, four times a day. Just think about this. Look at our age and trying to get eye drops in our eyes. You know, we waste a lot of it, you know. However, it's doing a, it's doing a good job, okay, okay. So we're, we've got something uh, that's working. <clears throat> okay, if we have glaucoma, it's affecting our peripheral vision, okay, our side or our upper or our lower vision. 
if we have glaucoma and uh, some of our peripheral vision is lost and we kind of have what I'll call like looking through a tube, kind of like tunnel vision, uh, what kind of activity do you think this may um, uh, be a problem with? It's kind of a basic activity, okay? Uh, we can look down, we can look around, oops, oops. Okay, maybe I better look this way. So it'll be our, our mobility, our walking, okay? Um, yes, glaucoma with the significant peripheral vision loss will be affecting our mobility. Okay. How about another eye disease? Oh, I know because a lot of you have had this um, cataracts or are still thinking about it um, and not having enough fix. Uh, so you have a little bit of everything, huh? Okay. Okay. So I had to have a new oh, okay. So I, I think they call that open angle. Yeah. Okay. 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 So cataracts. <clears throat> um, now, what does um, cataract affect? It affects that crystalline lens. Remember, and that crystalline lens isn't crystalline anymore because we're a little bit older. So what happens is. That poor lens that's no longer clear, it's kind of yellowish, now it's starting to crack. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that means we're going to have a lot of problems with light, okay? Um, and it also means we're going to have some blurry vision, okay? Because cataract means waterfall, and if you stand behind a waterfall, it's kind of blurry looking. So, yes? Well, sure, it could be, sure, because especially with the lights, in fact, that's probably when you're really going to notice it. Yeah. yeah, 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 glaucoma affects is our night vision, yeah. okay, cataracts, yeah, yeah, anything with glare is a, is a real problem, okay. Okay, so cataracts, so what are we going to do about this cataract? Okay, we, we can't cure the cataract, however, guess what we can do? We can vacuum that cataract out, that lens, we can vacuum that lens out of our eye and insert a, a folded up, brand new, good to go, made out of super duper plastic stuff, okay? Get it in our eye, spread it out, okay? And um, like this gentleman here, he said he's pretty happy, he's the best vision he's ever had. Most people are pretty happy once their cataract is removed and a new lens inserted, okay? Great. Okay, so if we have blurry vision from our cataract that's not yet uh, removed, uh, what types of activities are we going to be having difficulty with? Okay, driving. Anything else? Taking pictures? Okay, yeah, okay. Reading. Yeah, pretty much everything because it's blurry vision. Okay. And let's do one more eye disease because um, it's not as common, or at least we don't realize it. Um, it's called diabetic retinopathy. So people that have um, systemic um, problems like diabetes, maybe multiple sclerosis, uh, once you've had those issues for a number of years, they can, uh, that disease can affect different parts, different organs, including the eyes. Okay. So diabetic retinopathy um, can involve leaking crooked growing vessels in the eye. And it can be over the whole eye. Remember wet macular degeneration was just the macula part? Okay. So if you have diabetic retinopathy, you may be experiencing leaking blood vessels, <laughs> creating issues uh, on, you know, your plans for the day. Maybe you're not so independent because you're having a bad day with your leaking blood vessels. Okay. Are you okay? Okay, good, good. Great. Okay, so we've covered a number of eye diseases. And incidentally, um, diabetic retinopathy still has laser treatments, um, you know, and they're, they're very helpful. 
So he covered four different eye diseases. Incidentally, there's a whole host of them, but you know, at least we've covered uh, dealing with central vision, peripheral vision, and overall blur. Okay, so you need to know that help's available. Just because you have an eye disease and it's now you're now experiencing vision loss doesn't mean you can't, you know, life goes on, okay? You still want to live where you want to live, okay? You still want to do what you want to do, and you still we still want to enjoy our golden years. So um, vision loss, uh, and it's not good, um, but it's not the end of life because there are services and programs and treatments and training avail available. <clears throat> I'm going to cover uh, seven concepts, okay, yeah, seven concepts um, that could be helpful, not just for people with vision loss, okay, but just for people our age, okay. But before I do this, because I always forget to do this, uh, I do work at the Mass Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Our services do include... Um, getting you to a low vision exam, and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, bringing in or having an occupational therapist come into the home for some one-on-one -on -one training on how to continue doing things in new ways, uh, volunteer services where people without much usable vision uh, can go out grocery shopping, the volunteer will be eyes, that type of thing, read the labels or help with the produce. Another common thing volunteers like to do um, is um, go walking with people, um, reading mail, so those types of things. We also have um, in, in, in Worcester and in a number of other places, technology training, okay? This is uh, so you can learn how to continue or even learn using your cell phone, um, iPads, um, computers, um, talking programs on the computers, things of that nature. We also have support groups. My organization is statewide, so these are services available throughout the state, and each service isn't necessarily available in every single community. Okay, so volunteer groups are run by peers. The peers have vision loss, okay, and uh, it's, a, it's a way of meeting people with similar conditions, experiencing similar problems, and learning how to successfully deal with them. Uh, we also have some vision loss counseling. Okay, um, before you leave, um, if you're interested or know somebody, please pick up one of our flyers. It's in a larger print, um, which just lists services, but at least if you've got a phone number so somebody can call to ask about help. Okay, the plug's gone. Okay, I've done the plug. I uh, plug the agency. Now let's talk about some concepts that are going to be helpful to us if we've lost vision, but guess what? It's helpful if we have, if just because of our age, because of our healthy aging eye. And many of you have healthy aging eyes here. The first concept has to do with, oh, incidentally, um, I talked about four different eye diseases, and uh, it may be interesting to see how someone with that eye disease sees something. So, um, I've got a number, uh, if you can pass one out to each table, that would be, that'd be helpful, yeah, yeah, okay. So I mean, feel free to kind of peruse that as, I, as I'm talking. Okay, so lighting. We all know we need more lighting, I already covered that. However, here's the deal with lighting. The lighting has to be over what it is we want to look at. It can be a, it can be a, a you know, a floor lamp. It could be, a, you know, a desk lamp, that type of thing. But it needs an adjustable lamp so you can put it over what you want to see. In other words, the lovely stucco lamps that we have, you know, three feet away from us on the end table, don't won't do the trick. Okay. Secondly, we need to reduce glare. Okay, whether it's indoor glare or outdoor glare, we need to reduce it. And you may see people wearing these colored sunglasses. Okay, this, these will reduce glare inside. Okay, it'll allow all the vision you still have left, don't forget, 
Some people have lost some vision, but it will still keep that vision they have left. And if we just have the healthy age and eye, it's just going to eliminate glare. Okay. Incidentally, yellow acetate over brightly colored mag magazine sheets will also do the same trick. It's kind of hard to demo holding a microphone. Many people need something like this over some of the glossier things we're looking at. Okay. So we're going to reduce glare. And, and how are we going to reduce glare outside? We're going to wear sunglasses. We're going to wear hats and things like that. Okay, that's good. Next, we've got to increase contrast. Okay. How are we going to increase contrast? How about just thinking about a light color and a dark color? Okay. Okay, think about the morning routine. We're going to pour without spilling, or at least do our best. How can we use increasing uh, contrast? How can we use contrast to maybe lessen the chance of spilling? You have two coffee cups, okay? You've got your white standard coffee cup, and you've got that cobalt blue cup that our, our daughters or granddaughters from the college they graduated from, okay? So, coffee drinkers, which mug are you going to use to pour your coffee in the hopes that you won't spill it? The white one. Because of the contrast. And all you milk drinkers, you're going to use... Blue. Yeah, contrast. Get it? Okay. Good job. You already gave yourself a pat on the back. But <laughs> okay. And, and getting around buildings, increasing contrast. Um, well, let's see, if, if, if I didn't have much usable vision and I was looking for a clock, I could probably find that clock because it's black on a light-colored wall, okay? Lots of ways we can use contrast. You're, you're doing a salad, okay, and let's figure out how to lessen the chances, especially if we lost vision, let's lessen the chances of kind of hurting ourselves. So we've got uh, two cutting boards to use, a dark one and a light one, okay? Oh, the, hey, let's pretend these are our cutting boards. Okay, which, which board are we going to use to slice the onion? The, the white one. one. dark one. No, we're not going to use the white one, okay? The because, because the onion's white and we're not going to see it so well. Got it? Okay. Okay, so let's, let's do a green pepper. Which one are we going to use? The black one? No, the white one. Okay. <laughs> How about a tomato? Well, we could probably use either one for the, the tomato, one. huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The white will be better because even though a tomato is kind of reddish orange, people with um, macular degeneration sometimes can't tell the difference between some of those colors. Um, if they're a deep color, they can't tell the difference between reds and blues and greens if macular degeneration is 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 um, pretty moderate or worse. Okay, good. Okay. So what else are we going to do? Oh, we can make it bigger. If we can make something bigger, chances are the back of, we can see it better on the back of our eye. What's the number one thing that we encounter um, that's bigger? Boy, I've got to give you hints. I mean, it's OK. I am helpful to give you hints. How about large print? Yeah, large print. Okay, so we can read a little better. And even better if there's white space around the large print and more white space in between. Okay, uh, how about that thing on the wall? Chances are we can see that a little better. It's, it's the TV people. Got laugh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we can make things bigger. Uh, what else could we do? Well, we could... Um, Ooh, how about this? I, I, I should always mention this. Do you all know that there's such a thing as large print checks? Because I'm finding people still don't know that yet. Large print checks are yellow, and the black lines are slightly embossed or slightly raised, OK? You can get these checks from your bag for no added cost than whatever it is they charge you for your regular checks, although you may have to call kind of remind them about that. What okay. do they call it? Large print checks. Large print checks? Yeah, of course you could. A little bit bigger, sure. 
Okay. Because um, I don't have a computer. <laughs> I don't know anything about computers. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Okay. Um, there are also um, templates that we can put over our regular size checklists. A lot of you are diehard New Englanders and people have told me like I've got too many of these checks, I'm not going to get large print checks, I'm going to use every single check that I already have. Okay, so we can put this template over our regular check and for the people with vision loss, uh, they, they're guided to where to put the date and they're guided, you know, so that you don't write crooked on your checks. That's one of the first thing that happens with, when you've got some vision issues. What you, when you write, you tend to write over and crooked. You, you don't do the straight lines so well. And just because we have vision loss, I mean, we still want our checks, you know, legible, that type of thing. Okay. Uh, there are also a whole host of other things in catalogs. You know, there's um, big number timers. There's talking this, that, and the other. Um, uh, there are... Um, T, um, what do you call it, measuring cups and spoons and stuff like that with bigger numbers on it, color-coded, etc. A lot of good things in some of these catalogs that are very helpful to people. Um, also, let's talk about the concept of um, tactile. Yes, let's do tactile. Oh, tactile, touching, something we can touch, okay? Uh, for people... For people with a lot of vision loss, um, they need uh, things like the microwave, uh, the TV remote, um, the, uh, the, the, sto the stove timer. They need that mark so maybe they can feel the different settings or the washing machine or the dryer or something like that. And these are some of the ways we can do it. You can, you can just feel them, uh, pass them around. Uh, if cabinet doors are open, uh, it's very helpful to increase the contrast by having tape um, along the side that's of a contrasting nature. Um, sides of counters can be taped so that people, especially with vision loss, are more apt to see a fluorescent color and avoid hitting themselves. Okay, does anybody uh, want to talk about the one thing I've, I've missed or one of the things I've missed? You haven't missed it, but um, I have a glare that yes. bothers me tremendously. Okay. And so um, is it indoor glare and outdoor glare? Yep. Okay. Okay. Because uh, I don't have to wear glasses, only like sunglasses to dry. Mm -hmm. It's just the glare. It's just the glare, sure. And it never bothered me before. Well, okay, so, I mean, do you have cataracts or? I had them removed. Okay, do you have um, dry macular degeneration or anything no, like that? Okay. Not that I know of. Okay, so your, your eyes are just getting a little more sensitive, yeah, so. At my age. Uh, at, <laughs> at our age, yeah, yeah. You know, so, so, you do, so you do the best you can, you know, eliminate um, driving at night when it's very glary, you know, you know, some of the, some of the intersections are really glary. What was that yellow uh, thing that you showed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is very helpful. Oh, I mean, uh, is this thing, or, oh, the other yellow acetate? Okay. What, I, I saw something that I Okay. Yeah, and I'm going to, yeah, well, you know what, because, you know, we've got limited time, you know, I'll stay after this presentation. I just want to get through it, okay? I'll stay after so that if you've got questions or you want us to call you or anything like that, I'm, I want to help you with that. But I need to cover magnifiers, okay? So magnifiers, one size doesn't fit all, okay? It, if somebody has an eye disease, uh, purchasing a magnifier from a, a, you know, Walmart or, or Staples or something it is not going to do the trick when you need magnification. There are different types of magnifiers and different strengths. In order to find, and, and you need a magnifier with a light built into it. In order to find out if magnifiers will help and what strength magnifier to get, one needs to go to a specialist, a low vision exam doctor specialist. Okay? When we grew up, we went to the optometrist. His or her, he or, he or she every day wakes up and says, I'm going to make sure my client, my patient, has 20 20 vision. Okay, then as we got older, we're going to see a medical doctor, an ophthalmologist. 
the ophthalmologist wakes up every day and says, I'm going to make sure that my patient's eye is healthy. He's going to treat any kind of diseases, fix any kind of diseases, do surgery on any, anything that's bothering our eye. A low vision doctor every day wakes up and says, I want to make sure that I can maximize my patient's remaining vision to do the best that we can with that so he, can, he or she can function well. So um, uh, a low vision exam most likely is going to address magnifiers, uh, increasing contrast, and reducing glare. Okay, uh, if, if you're interested, uh, you can try out these magnifiers. I'll tell you one's not very strong and one is quite strong. The difference between the magnifier is one can't set directly on what one wants to read and the other kind of magnifier is a handheld magnifier and needs to be focused and, you, and leave the same distance um, from the paper to the magnifier as one reads, okay? Training is needed for this, um, so one doesn't lose their place, that type of thing. OTs are great at training that. So you've got, a, you've got an idea, there's a, a healthy aging eye, which a lot of us here have. Doesn't mean our eye's perfect, okay? But it's, you know, there's no eye diseases. Uh, you've learned a couple of different eye diseases, and they're affecting different parts of the eye. So they're affecting different activities that we may be doing. You've learned some concepts that we really use with people with eye diseases, but guess what? Those concepts actually kind of help us because even, you know, we have a healthy aging eye, so we've got some issues we're dealing with. And you know the name of the organization, the Mass Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, to call. So before you leave, uh, pick up um, a flyer on services uh, and pick up um, this one flyer that says tips for the person with vision loss because the tips are good for all of us. Okay, I will stay after for any uh, questions. I just want to make sure he's all done with the, the, the taping. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.